Alright, hi guys, this is another, um, C tutorial from US1 Programming. Um, so, I told you we would do programming today, um, but the thing is that I have to cover a few, a uh, few more things first. So, um, uh, if I were to cover this entire program in, uh, one video, it would probably be longer than fif uh, 15 minutes. And from what I know, um, uh, newbie, uh, newbie YouTubers can't post a video that's longer than 15 minutes. So, um, I'm gonna break it up into a ton of really smaller videos. Uh, so today I'm gonna talk about, uh, how the compiling process works. So what is compiling? Um, it takes this text, which humans can read, and it turns it into ones and zeros, which the computer can understand. Um, compiler can be, uh, compiling can be, uh, broken down into more steps. Um, uh, three steps, to be precise, and that is one, pre-processing, two, compiling, and three, linking. So, um, uh, pre-processing, so that's the first step. What the pre-processor does is, um, it, uh, goes through the code, it goes through, it, this is, basically what happens is, this, uh, text is handed to the preprocessor. What it does is it goes through the co code and m makes a bunch of edits. So, anything that starts with a hash, like this line, is the only one in this program, is, uh, the preprocessor will take care of. So, um, actually, these, uh, the, anything that starts with a hash is called a directive, or a preprocessor directive, which basically means it tells the preprocessor to do something. So, a preprocessor, it doesn't touch anything that doesn't start with hash. Alright, so, um, there's multiple preprocessing directives, which I will cover in future videos, in probably... Uh, a lot later because some of them are complex and you won't understand them until you have a grasp of more basic concepts and um, so I'll just tell you about this one now uh, hash include what this does is um, uh, hash include just tells you to um, it takes um, a bunch of uh, messages from it, it uh, let's see okay so just a bunch of information from this file uh, so this is just telling the preprocessor to make this available to the program. So um, you've got a bunch of information in stdio.h. That's a file, and um, you're just telling the preprocessor to make the, all the information here available to the program for usage. Um, then the next uh, next step is compiling. So what this does is it takes. Uh, whatever is generated by the preprocessor. By the way, after the preprocessor does this, it is still text. It is still readable by a human, as far as I know. Um, I might be mistaken about that, but um, I think I'm right. So, um, uh, it's still readable by a human after a preprocessor touches it. Then the next thing that happens is the uh, compiling. That's also also compiling can offer refer to the entire process, preprocessor and compiling and linking. Which it usually be uh, usually will be used in in that context, but this uh, this middle step is also known as compiling. So what compiling does is it takes this and it translates it into something called object code. And so if you're on Windows like I am, then uh, that will have uh, an extension .obj. So I will actually show that to you. Um, I will try and find that. Um, okay, let's just do this one. Uh, so, you will find uh, that under, uh, you should find the object code under hello world, and then the, or your project name, and then the project name again, and then debug, and here it is, hello world.obj. So, that is the object code for this. I uh, realize that most of these files that I showed you will only be, um, uh, will only be present after, after you compile it at least once. So, um, Yes, this is not read. Object code is kind of um, it's almost it's almost to the full executable, but it's not there yet. Um, because each let's say if you have a multi-file program, then each um, each file like if you have let's say hello world and then hello world two dot uh both dot cpp, then in that case each one would have its own object file. Um, to turn this all into one program or an executable, that's where the linking comes in. And, uh, so what the linker does is it takes a bunch of object files and it turns them into an executable. So, notice that, uh, an object file is still not executable, even though, even if there's only one file in the project. So, um, you can find the executable under your project name, 
slash debug slash and then it's right there hello world dot exe so in case you don't know what a uh, dot exe is it's just a um it's just a file that the computer can run it is ones and zeros um if you view it through like uh, I don't know like notepad plus plus then uh, uh it won't show up as uh as uh, um uh, as ones and zeros because uh notepad plus plus tries to interpret it as characters uh this might be too complex to understand but uh yeah just for people who know programming so um yeah, so after after the linker does it uh, does its job, this is completely executable, and you can double click on that and run the program. So that pretty much ends this. In the next tutorial, I'll talk about let's see, um, I will talk about uh, maybe directive state uh, functions and uh, statements maybe. So um, yeah, see you guys in the next video.